we've been talking, uh, there's been a lot of talk about this library. Uh, the It's a uh, film scoring selection. It's the latest film scoring selection. And I know that we're waiting for soaring strings because they they kind of let... Uh, there was a video of uh, one of the one of the expansions, and uh, and and there was like a little a little thing I saw, and it was like there was soaring strings in there. So we know that that there is a string library coming, a string edition, like hopefully some you know nice legato. But they they introduced a grand brass, and it's a, it's really kind of interesting because what these scoring selections are. I guess when you're looking in the aisle, uh, the baking aisle, the spice aisle, you know, it's these it's these little containers of saffron or uh, or pap- paprika or just different spices. Uh, they're not full blown libraries necessarily in themselves, but they are these add ons and these flavors that you can put into um, the larger a- Abbey Road One. The Abbey Road One player is a part of this. So if you started with this, you wouldn't need any additional uh, libraries. Uh, but but I but yeah, you you would <laughs> you would on the other hand. So what this is, they've they've got um, you know four four horn players and a tuba that's playing in an octave, and then they've got. Um, Another another thing where they layer it with uh, the cello. One other thing, I've got this theory. I'm going to I'm going to mute the sound. But if you look, um, if you look at this, okay, let's see what they do here. Okay, see those lines and stuff going around. All those dots, you know. I've got a theory about those dots. That all of those dots represent some kind of um, uh, some kind of connection with these libraries. That, that I have a theory that each dot is going to be a, a, an expansion or part of what, uh, what some think uh, have speculated to be a modular uh, orchestral library, which I think is going to be really cool. So we're going to jump right into this, um, the Grand Brass. And you can just see it. It comes in there, a Spitfire player. And let's just kind of uh, take a listen. The, the thing you're going to notice right away is that Man, the note range is very limited, and um, because with me, I'm playing, I'm always playing outside of the lines. It seems like so, I'm always running out of some things. But uh, let's just uh, take a listen to the legatos. We'll kind of run through some things here, and then I'm going to try to try to show you some other things with this here. So this is good for, you know, those those melody lines when when you just need. I've got uh, CC one. Of course, it's on the mod modulation wheel, but I've also got it uh, on uh, my number one slider here on the nano controller. And already I ran, I ran, there's no notes here, so. But it's royal and it's foreboding uh, as well. Yeah. And then we can go to that higher dynamic. And I would recommend too. Uh, cinematic composing has a really cool, um, 
really cool video about uh, Abbey Road One, and we all look at these from different perspectives. And it's it's good to it's good to hear other perspectives and listen and and check things out uh, because we see things differently and hear things differently. But when we bring everything together, it just adds so much more value to the whole picture. So th these are the longs. Now see, I'm trying to do this, do this here, to go on up, and it's not there. That's that's the that's that's the thing that bugs me, I guess, because I'm wanting I'm wanting a little bit more. But I'm going to kind of show you some ways we can get around that. Now these are not screaming, um, screaming brass. You've got that dynamic range here. But it does hit hit a ceiling to some point because you've got to understand, I guess, what they're going for. They're not going for a bombastic type of brass. Uh, it's more it's more regal, um, and um, so it's not more it's not like an in your face type of brass. It's more of this type of grand grandness, I guess, for lack of a better word. And you can't really play too much because it, it will get muddy down there if you're not careful. There's nothing that I find richer and royaler, royaler if, if that's a word, than French horns. And you've got that bottom added with the tuba. It does have um, it does have an interesting attack, but that's they're just kind of they're just kind of moving into it. <laughs> King Friday brass, yeah. Now let's listen to the staccatos. Now the staccatos are not affected by the uh, CC one; it's affected by Balot. It's affected by velocity, by velocity. So, uh, and these are in the same configuration uh, with the 8VA. So I've actually got my expression pedal mapped to volume. So that's why I'm, you're seeing that, uh, that happen. So let's, uh, let's take a listen to the staccatos. Now this is a little more aggressive when you, when you lay into it. Let me see something. I want to um, let me turn the reverb off, and uh, we can hear what's happening in the room. And with the reverb off, you still hear that uh, that bloom of that uh, Abbey Road studio. Yeah, see that's that's it again. See, so you, you keep running, you run out of notes, but it's just for those. Yeah, cool. Now we've got some tenuto. Let's see, I'm playing up here. It's down here. And then the CC1 does have an effect on the dynamic. Mm -hmm. 
And then we've got swells. So you've got performed swells, either the shorts. Yeah. And they do kind of blaze a little bit when they hit the top of the dynamic, the dynamic range. And medium. And again, it's better to really have these natural performed And these are not tempo synced because they just record them. But that just gives you some little, little extras there. And um, the last, uh, let's see what we've got. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Okay, so we've got soaring legato. Now what this does, this takes the horns and pairs them with the cello section. Uh, so you can hear, and you can see we've shifted octaves up a little bit. And you hear those uh, cellos. And, th and that's, that's, that was kind of puzzling at first. You know, it's grand brass and you've got cellos in there. Uh, so that, you know, it, th this, is, this has been one of the, really the most confusing one out of their additions for me. Uh, but... Uh, Hear that beautiful. Yeah, that's that. And we can go down to that real soft dynamic. And uh, the last articulation that we have uh, for these um, are the soaring longs. And so now we can kind of... So let me tell you what we're going to do. So I've taken this, um, taken this concept here. You know, I am a big fan of Unify. And so what I've done, I've created a, um, a layer or a Unify patch that um, incorporates several instances of Abbey Road 1. So let me show you what I've done here. So I've got um, legendary low strings, and I actually have them mapped down here. And I have the um, the horns here. I'm going to just solo. So these these are the horns from Abbey Road One. And I actually have the uh, key range a little limited. So it's going to stop right here at this B flat. And with the grand brass, I have the um, the soaring legato selected, so it's going to be up in this range. And legendary low strings are going to be down in um, in this range, in the lower range, of course, down here. So 
you know, and I, you know, legendary low strings is one of one of my favorite of the um, of the uh, uh, selections. Listen, I mean, I, I mean, that is just gorgeous. And I've got the uh, legato selected there. This is where the magic happens when you combine these together. And um, I'm going to just uh, unsolo this. And we're going to take a listen to uh... the thing is the magic happens when you take all of these sections and um, and, you know, I'm approaching it uh, in this video as you know, because we're live. So I'm, I'm approaching it like an ensemble type of thing. And that's uh, that's what a lot of this. The content for Abbey Road 1 is now is just ensembles where you can just put your hands on something very quickly and get something uh, that sounds very nice. So you hear that soaring legato in... Um strings covering that down here. And then you can go up here. is doing that high legato like this. That's another reason I like to use Unify is because it is so easy to just create these beautiful layers um, and and uh, be able to stack those, change the key ranges and stuff. Um, it's beautiful. So this is this is not um, in your face brass. This is grand brass. That uh, that regalness and beauty. have those low strings just cutting in there and then um, let's uh, let me mute the horn layer here and um, that way we can just hear Yes. 
see. It's like, once there was a way to get back home from seeing that, just that. And I will sing a lullaby. Yeah, that is where Grand Brass excels in is that those lyrical. Two notes, two notes going, but you have so much richness in that. And sometimes when you limit yourself, it, uh, it causes you to really, um, I know I can't play 20, 20 notes here. But still, it's full and rich and uh, very beautiful. Wow. Check out Legendary Low Strings too, you know. And you hear that just singing like. <laughs> but you run out of notes, but that's okay. You just learn how to compose around those limitations and, uh, <laughs> you know, because the sound is, uh, the sound is just a signature sound that uh, really is beautiful. Okay, wow.